and let me send in the message Okay. There. And hello. Yes, I know there's probably no one watching right now except for you folks on YouTube. Uh, like and subscribe the whole nine the whole, whole nonsense. Although I don't know if I've even had a single like yet. I've had like three views per video. Oh well. Anyway. Yes, tonight I am going to be doing uh, more orcs. To be exact, my plan is to make a sergeant for the archers. And it's going to be holding a crossbow. And then I have, the same way I did the archers back on Thursday, I have the... Uh, spearmen with shields already posed up and set up and ready to sculpt on. And here's hoping I don't have to deal with an insane fuzzbutt again that I'm currently staring at. This one's not so insane. That one is. Hmm. Isn't that right, baby girl? Okay. So anyway. I'm going ahead and I am going to shift to Daz Studio. Now I know that there are several of you who have seen, almost anyone who's in here this week will probably have already seen uh, my videos before so they know that I've got this figure here that it's got its own bones and it can change uh, proportions and make it look like different races including my orcs. Now one thing I'm going to do since I'm going to be making a sergeant I'm going to load in the previous orc sergeant so I can make sure that this stays you know the right size. So I've got to go ahead and load in where is he? That's the orc. Da, 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 the orc sergeant. Where did I put that one? I don't remember. Did I put him in here? Yeah, there he is. That's the orc sergeant. I'm gonna slide him off to the right. Or no, slide him back. Just so I can get the size right on this guy. So the first thing that's happened is I'm going to turn him into an orc. Well, let me turn off the bones. Then I'm going to load in the orc tusks. Click on his head. So it opens up this section over here. I'm going to drag the tusks and parent him to his jaw. So that way when I go to his jaw, I can sit there and open close and they go with the jaw now the thing is what I really need to do is I need to reduce it to say 50% orc but then 50% orc boss uh, lower the orc boss just a little bit increase orc and that'll make him about the same size as the other sergeant I can go ahead and delete him and now I zoom out a little bit. Now this is an unposed bear geometry orc. And I don't mean bear as in I mean bear as in, you know, just no detailing on it. Well, I need to go ahead, first things first, I need to give him a, let's go ahead and give him a hip quiver. Now we're going to have to move this a bit because it is a slightly different proportion than the uh, 
regular orcs, okay. Now there's his hip quiver. And then we're going to put a crossbow in his left hand. So that would be crossbow left hand. Now again, this is uh, the crossbow here ends up off center because you know he's he's larger. But I'm going to make the crossbow larger as it is because, well, he's going to be a big old sergeant. I want this to look like an arbalest. Then we're going to go to the back view and. We're going to move the crossbow just enough to where it's still in his hand. And I'm going to have to, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm going to pull it down a little bit this way. And then lower that thumb, because the thumb's not quite in contact. This is a human in a normal proportioned thumb. It probably would be there. Okay, so he's got the crossbow in his hand, but he's got, he's got to tilt that hand just a little bit because it's going through his arm. Now, next, the last thing to do is I need to add on the little tunic bottom. The reason for this tunic bottom is because, well, he's wearing a tunic. And as I've shown before, I, c I let this uh, help me fuse it together to be the bottom of a tunic, or in this case, a hauberk. Well, no, the other archers aren't wearing armor, so he won't either. Okay. So have we got anybody in yet? No, we don't. Yay! It's just me. In fact, it looks like I don't even have my... Uh... Let me check on Nightbot. Okay, according to this, he's in the channel. Excellent. Okay. Now, the next thing we got to do is we got to pose him. And right now, I'm thinking probably the best thing to do to pose him is to have that crossbow on his hip while he's pointing. So I'm going to start off over. Okay. Let's start off by bringing the legs in just a little bit. And then he's going to tilt the hips just... Actually, I know what I'll do. Then I'm going to select the hip, and from the front view, I'm going to let's do it this way. Bring the hip down into one side, and then I'm going to rotate the hip. going to move it over again. Okay. And what this does, having your hip and shoulders off-center to everything else, especially the ground, is one of the best things to do. I'm twist it just a little. We're going to bend it forward a little bit, too, so you can bend back at the chest and be a little bit more yeah and 
Okay, now, that's our torso and our legs, except, no, Yeah, there we go. That's better. And let's twist this. All right. First of all, let's unpin everything. Unpin all. And we're gonna twist this this lower leg. There we go. Now, it's gonna, this collar is gonna go back a little. It's gonna twist a little this way gonna bend the arm and make it go back. I'm gonna twist it quite a bit so that the elbow bends up like this. But it's also gonna twist like this. Now we're gonna select the hand and we're gonna make it go side to side a little bit more. Basically, the end result is we want this to be in his hip, but not in his hip. And we're just going to click it a couple... There we go. Now, let's bend this back just a little bit because he's too far forward. There we go. More of a commanding pose there with the upper torso. We're going to move the head too, so let's... We're going to twist the this shoulder forward. Bring it bend up like this. Side to side. And we're going to bend the fingers. Now here's the deal. We're not going to bend them completely. What we're going to do is we're going to twist them. when it comes time to actually sculpt we're going to be fixing those fingers to be a bit more in a proper gesture but for right now they're all one now we're going to bend the neck back the head down we're going to open the mouth and twist the head to the side. Now, let's bend the head forward, bend the neck forward, bend the head back. So let's get that chin off the chest. Yeah, there we go. That's a right nice and proper pose. And like I said, except for the hand. And that finger we're going to fix in sculpt. Now the next thing we do is we go to the front view and we're gonna check both feet okay one thing we need to un we need to bend this toe up just a little bit just a little bit there next thing we're gonna do is we're going to move this foot down and then bend it a little Then we're going to hit con bend the toe up a little bit. And hit control D. This drops the feet. As opposed to dropping the beat, which I can't do because I suck at any kind of wrap like thing. And we have our basic orc shape done. 
for the archery commander. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to make him and his skirt invisible. We're going to export all the rest of this as bare geometry. Export. Freedom Force. No, not Freedom Force. Um, there it is. Broadcast Minutes. You can't see my... Uh, Uh, orc bow sarge props. You cannot see my various uh, opening up the dialogue trees and that because it's just meh. You're gonna hide the tusks, hide the crossbow, and hide the skirt. No, no, don't hide the skirt. Hide the quiver. Make the skirt visible. This is the basic body. Yes, the skirt counts as part of the basic body. Now file, export, orc bow sarge body. Now the thing is, I've already done this for two more orcs, but those orcs are going to be spearmen. Okay, this is the sergeant. Alright, now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up ZBrush. Right now, ZBrush just has this little star in there. And that star is going to be replaced by the orc body. So let me go ahead, go in here. Oh, ba -do, ba -do. Ba boom, ba boom. Orc Bosarge body. And this is our sergeant here. And like I said, before I do anything else, there's, I gotta kind of clean up this gap in the in the body here. Also, I'm going to smooth out. That's too strong. I'm also going to smooth out the chest area because he's going to be wearing a shirt, not a tight-fitting spandex jacket, and he's not going to be bare-chested either. So, we smooth out some of these areas here because they won't be as obvious Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to use the Move Topological Brush. We're going to first frame to zoom in. We're going to get closer. And we're going to enlarge this. Now the thing is, this is going to move it in the right position. This will also make it difficult to print properly. I've got to warn you about that. And now zoom it in a bit. I'm going to try and get it a little bit thicker this way. There we go. Frame out. And we have our basic orc buddy. All ready for the next step, which actually is loading in his props. We're going to import the orc sergeant props. There we have them. Now, that as soon as we've got them loaded in, we're going to make them invisible. And then we're going to zoom back in. And we're going to do something to the inner mouth 
to kind of bring it in because this is too much of a gap to print. It's not going to print well like this. I'm going to bring it in a bit. Now the thing is, we are going to be adding in further teeth. So we're not going to bring it in as far as we could. Frame out. Geometry. We're going to divide the whole thing until it's around yeah, 1.4 million polygons. Yes, 1.4 million polygons. I've probably done that joke several times during the time I've done this. Now we're going to change, we're going to dynamesh it at 768 resolution. And what this does, it completely rebuilds the entirety of the orc and that tunic that's part of the uh, OBJ into a single manifold surface. And that means it's time to start breaking out the Wacom. We Wacom. Now, I'm going to zoom up the uh, smoothing intensity real quick because, well, at the more polygons that the smoothing brush covers, whether it's because you're using a larger brush or a higher density, the less effect it actually has on the figure. So by doing this, we can, by raising up the intensity, we can smooth out the seam for the bottom of the tunic so that looks like it's actually part of one seamless garment instead of a kilt that has his butt and stomach poking through. Like, yeah, let's shrink this one more, a couple more times, because this area does tend to take a lot more smoothing than others. You know, I was thinking about it, and I got stuck watching them. There's so many epic rap battles of history that could have been done that got completely, utterly missed, just because... That whole, who's next, you decide, nonsense. Okay, so we have the, the basic done. Now we need to make the trim for the tunic. It's, in order to keep them looking like they're part of the same unit, I'm going to do the same thing here that I did on the archers. First of all, I need to change the focal shift of the select brush. Next thing is, just in case, I need to put the stroke menu over there and turn on lazy mouse so I can turn off the lazy mouse whenever I need to. Not turn on, open lazy mouse. Now the next thing is we're going to do the belt first so I don't forget it. I almost forgot it on one of the archers so I'm going to do it right here. It's, come, it's a big old belt. And it's coming, coming round the bat when it comes. And we're gonna erase part of it because that doesn't that look that came up by accident and then just continue on. Now one thing about orcs they're well they mimic things a lot. Now that I've got that selected, I go to Subtool, Extract, and it needs to extract at 0 0.03. This is not 0 0.03 millimeters. This is just the amount of extraction done in ZBrush's native scaling. So I click Extract, I click Accept, and I deselect the vertices on that, or the, or the polygons on that. Now the thing is, Let's say I go back to the orc and turn off the belt. Those are still selected. I so I need to undo that. Go back to the belt. And now I'm not going to give him a normal belt buckle. Instead, first thing I've got to do, I've got to go ahead and dynamesh it because oh, I forgot. This is supposed to be a little bit more rigid, so dynamesh it 256. Dynamesh and subdivide a couple times. Oh, that's too many.
delete lower, delete higher. Now I've got a special brush that I've made that includes a skull. And that's what he's going to have for his belt buckle, just like the other sergeants. And that's too far out. No. You see, this is what's called an insert mesh brush. And I need to make sure that it's going in deep enough. So I go to depth. Embed needs to be more like 18. And when I click in the center and drag down, it creates our skull belt buckle. And that's a still not deep enough. Z. Let's make the embed zero. And grab here, pull it out. And that's good. Now I deselect, because when you add in an insert mesh like that, it selects, it masks off everything except what you have just done. So now we've got our orc with his belt buckle. Time to go ahead and add on the rest of the seams, which is going to be done with a smaller brush. And what I'm going to do, first, I've got to draw around the bottom edge here. And i got to select both above and below that edge and then I'll come back later and clean up off the thighs which coincidentally is something orcs never do yes cleaning off thighs they just prefer to either stay dirty or if it's food they'll eat it dirty because hey it's more good for the chewing alright yeah that's the way it is yeah, fun fact. Everyone's everyone who's not British is saying W A A A A A A G H that you know that the orcs cry out in Warhammer. You're saying it wrong. Almost almost guaranteed. You see it's based on what well, Games Workshop comes from central to northern UK. It has not come from, like, the London area. And so, they make fun of the accents they hear all the time. W-A-A-A, -A -A, however many A's you want, G-H, is pronounced WAR. Not WAG. It's WAR. And that has been your edu educational moment for tonight. So here in a few you'll be completely forgetting about everything we've learned because hey that's what happens except not because you got to remember what you've learned when you're working or you forget everything but that has absolutely nothing to do with sculpting so we're probably going to forget about it. And like I said we're erasing the mask on the legs because we don't want the legs to come up with some pokey pokey outy bits from this. Now the way you are in ZBrush, I don't know how it is in Sculptress or in other sculpting softwares, but in ZBrush to mask something is control and you just draw in. And to erase the mask is control and alt at the same time frame out. Okay, let's go ahead and draw on Yeah, let's go ahead and draw on our short sleeve shirt seams on the arms. The areas that get masked when I'm doing this are areas that will be extracted out and inflated as new pieces. The intent behind this is effectively it's something that fits the curvature 
of the, in this case, arm or waist or bottom of the skirt without, you know, really losing shape. Because it's done, the shape is actually after the fact. Okay, and then the last one we need to do is the neck. Now the neck is going to require a lot more cleaning up afterwards. Because we have to make a much smaller brush because we end up having bits on the shirt that we don't want. bits on the bits here we do want bits on the chin we don't want and bits on the ear we definitely don't want you don't want your ears to have a part of your collar on it you know carefully if you look right in there you can see there's still some ear let's make it even smaller less likely to erase from the actual seam just a little bit zoom out and I think that's gotten all of that one there's not so much on the ear down here but there's quite a bit on the chin that we don't want it's and quite a bit on the shirt we don't want. Let's erase that. And then clean up right here. Okay. Now, I zoom out. On a human or an elf or somebody else whose neck is not com almost entirely in the way of his, uh, or his jaw is not almost entirely in the way of his neck, I wouldn't have to do as much cleanup. Now we're going to extract this at point zero 0.02. Enough to be seen and printed, but not as much as the belt. Okay, and then... Geometry, since this is softer than leather, it can stay at 128. So we're going to Dynamesh. And we're going to divide it a couple times. There. Now we go back to our Sarge. Do that. And turn on the belt. And we've got his tunic on. Now the next thing is bracers and boots. We really want to do at least the basics of the clothing and, and extract what we need to extract before we actually do any detailing on them because that way we don't forget something. Okay, so next up is bracers. Because, you know, He's a boss man. He's got to have, you know, slightly better protection than his subordinates. Because he's tough enough to take it from them if they found it on their own. And then this bracer over here. A lot of times, especially on humans and elves, I'll give bracers, like, some lacings and things like that. I'm not going to do that with these. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put studs all over them. Now, to emphasize that these are not part of the shirt, we're going to go back to point zero 0.03. Extract. They're a good bit. Oh, wait. I forgot to remove some of this from the inside of the, of the hand. Because the brushes in ZBrush are spherical. That means that when I hit that big brush across the wrist 
It also it was large enough that it also took in this part of the hand with it. Okay, now extract, accept, draw that on. We select him again to deselect where the bracers are. And again, before we detail them, let's go ahead, geometry. Oh, wait, I got the wrong one. I got to select the uh, bracers. Geometry, change it dynamesh to 256. Dynamesh, divide on this. Yeah, this makes it a bit easier. Okay, delete lower. Now we go back up to Mr. Big Boss. And now to make his boots, we're going to give him... We're not going to give him cuffed boots. We're going to give him ankle highs or knee highs. But it's going to look similar to how we do cuffed boots. Because we're going to start off with a very large selection zone and these are going to be where the tops of the boots are And we're going to actually blend in the bottoms. So we extract, accept, okay, geometry, 256 dynamesh. We are not going to increase the resolution on those because we're going to need a smaller polygon count that will make things easier. And we're going to deselect that. And now we're going to do one further thing. We're going to go to the bottom. And we know it's not going to work that way. We're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to put toe caps on his boots. Just like we did the archers. Or at least one of the archers. Did we do it to both archers? I don't remember. Anyway. Big old toe cap boots. Now one other thing we're going to do that we really should have done on the other ones, or one, is we're going to cut off the bottom of the, of the uh, toe cap. Make it a little bit easier. We're going to draw across. Yeah, there we go. Whoops. Let's shrink this, and just for the sake, because this is all we need to worry about, let's undo the mask on this part. And go back up here, and... Whoop! And draw on just a little bit. Ah, oh, heck. and then trim there just to give it a nice sharp edge not a sharp corner like the others we're going to extract this at 0 0.02 because it's plates on the boots not thick leather anything now we have our clothing ready or at least we have the rough shape and detail an area for our clothing so it's time to start actually going in and making it our clothing so we're going to start from the ground up now, down here one thing that we need to do is increase this so that it's almost there we're going to smooth the bottoms of the boots 
take that edge away and have less of it hanging out over the foot. Now we're going to shrink this and reduce the intensity quite a lot and focus more on just on, on, on blending out the lines that we just, the little seam line we just made here between the smoothings. What really matters here is that nice large shelf right there just below the knee. That's what's going to be end up mostly being our detail for this. And it, when printed, it will very clearly look like the top of a boot. Whether you paint him as having no pants or pants, this is obviously and blatantly where the boot is. Now we're going to switch back to move topological. Then move out a little bit. We're going to make the mouse just a little bit bigger. And we're going to start here. We're going to grab and we're going to move in and down around the entire foot. So what that's going to do is it'll there'll be coming a time soon when we're going to be uh, basically we're going to be doing another dynamesh, but it's going to be mostly for you know the final purpose. Let's move that out a little bit. Yeah, this will let us. Smooth that out. Actually, let me go ahead and turn the smoothing up. Okay. This does not matter. The little pop-up I just got of his calf does not matter. In fact, that's actually a good sign. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing. Well, I'm going to smooth out that area. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other leg. You can see exactly what I mean, how now it's starting to look like the top of a boot. We might actually end up making... No, we did that to the uh, big boss. We can we don't have to worry about it here. I was gonna say making a uh, a calf plate there. Okay. We've already given him, you know, the big old uh, toe caps on his boots. We don't necessarily need to give him greaves. Because Lord knows all the people he's going to be fighting are going to be giving him grief. He's an orc, after all. And grief is, you know, something they don't really know how to deal with. Oi! My buddy died! Uh, anyone hungry? I could go for a bit to eat. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Let's get down for some kippers. Bangers and mash, anyone? But yes, orcs are, 40k orcs at least, are based on a, one of the British accents. Okay. Next thing we're going to go for is the bracers, as you can see by how they suddenly became lit up. Now what I'm going to do with them, one thing I need to do, one thing that I've added in my time, let's go ahead and turn this on just for this, is I have added a new object whose whole purpose is helping me remember what size I can make some of these details. Okay. Oh no. <sighs> Import Broadcast miniatures, new orc sarge props. Yeah, this is what I needed to have selected. Import. 
detail scaling. Now, what this does, the big one is details that will definitely be seen. That's for things like the haft of a weapon. The medium one is about the smallest I should really do. And the tiny one is to remind me what's absolutely right out. So I want to try and keep them between, you know, the trying to keep it above the medium one. I can definitely stay below the, the small, the that one. And hide this. So what I need to do now is I need to get a mouse, uh, make sure my mouse is, that's too big, so let's shrink it a bit. And I'm going to inflate. I'm going to increase it quite a bit. And make sure it's not on that. Go back to the body, hide the dots because I don't need them anymore. Alright, go back to the bracers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in No, that's not enough. Let's make it... I want to make these kind of spiky, so... No. Intensity. Let's make it a little bit bigger, because we can. Yeah. Spiky, spiky. Eh. So he's got spikes on that band. Or not so much spikes as, as... It's somewhat spiky, but it's very definitely more of studs. But either way. There. There. Okay, our bracers have spikes on them, or studs. Now the next thing that's ready is actually, it's time to kind of, let's take these, move them up. But I'm going to have to do another Dynamesh, but before I do, I'm going to zoom in on these eyes go to our uh, slash tool and shrink the mouse because what I'm going to do I'm going to make the that didn't work oh I know what I forgot to do I forgot to oh yeah look lady, lazy mouse is on yay Okay. Give me just a second here. Okay, now, like I was trying to say, I need to go in, shrink down a bit more, and basically what I'm doing is I'm exaggerate. Now that's still too that's too strong. Now I'm exaggerating the edge of the eyes because 
when I did the first Dynamesh, it blended them in a bit. If I did another Dynamesh, they would be almost non-existent. That's one thing you'll find is common when sculpting miniatures for printing. And that's you have to exaggerate these details going in or out. That's both in size and in definition. All right, now I'm going to make everything else invisible for right now. And I'm going to blend or first of all merge down. So now they're the same. Oh, psh, Nikes. Let me go ahead. I gotta do one other thing. Polygroups. Auto groups. Okay, now. Zoom in. Geometry. Divide. Okay. I had to divide those up and deformation polish them 100% because it's still got the polygons of the pre. There we go. All right, now undo that. That was to hide the polygons. And now we're going to Dynamesh again. Ah. And we zoom in and we see that now we see that stitching effect. That means that the bottom of the boot cuffs or boot toppers so to speak have blended in are now one solid surface with the rest of the orc and that is what we want because that lets us now smooth them out you see what smoothing really is it takes all of the polygons that are under the brush and it averages them you know and so now it's almost totally very clear that those are boots not bracers around not not anything around his legs so what's next won't need those, won't need those. It'll need those and our belt. Actually what we need to do also with our belt, it's 72,000 polygons. We can go ahead and divide our belt a couple times to smooth out the skull. Delete lower and Dynamesh at 512 resolution. And, oh, nope. Dynamesh at 1024 resolution. Yeah, there we go. You see, the smaller it is, the higher the resolution you need to go. All right, now. What we're doing next is we are actually going in. Let me blend in this arm here. And we're going to make the wrinkles for this guy's tunic. Okay? And by doing so, we're going to make it look like he's wearing clothing and not just some kind of really super tight muscle shirt. All right. Um, all 
All right. Now, what I got to do is I got to add in the wrinkles now. See, the thing is, there are several different kinds of wrinkles, but some of them are pretty much, you know, you, we don't need to worry about them with this type of sculpting. We can also be a lot more general and broad strokes, no pun intended, about the basic kinds. We're going to start off with a standard brush. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because this is, you know, the first thing we're going to do is some compression wrinkles. Oh, let me smooth out where the chest is. We're going to do some compression wrinkles from where the belt is. Now it's most likely pulled in kind of in the front and in the back and then the sides are kind of a little bit more taut. So we have a wrinkle. That's not large enough. We need bigger wrinkles! We're not bigger, but deeper. Okay, so. And go up towards the chest. Let me smooth out the back ends of these wrinkles. Because wrinkles start off strong and fade. You know, they're kind of like every sports team I ever followed. Now these wrinkles point towards what's point towards what's making them tense. You know, it's like here, here, that's the one, officer. That's the one that's making me feel all uncomfortable. Okay, and we're gonna have some coming up. In fact, he's even pointing. Is he pointing at what's making him tense? I don't know. All I know is that he's pointing at something that he wants his archers to shoot at. And so, yes, come on little fuzzbutt. Good girl. Yeah. That shins you. She obeys me. Isn't that a frightening thought that a cat obeys me? Oh, that one didn't turn out well. And then smooth out the top. Maybe give it a little bit more of a... Um. Okay, and then another one kind of coming up. Smooth it out. And coming up this way. Smooth it out. And then on the sides here, well, this one kind of already has a place. It could almost be a wrinkle. And now before I do any other wrinkles, I have to do one thing I forgot to do. No wonder that it wasn't so strong. I had Lazy Mouse on. Lazy Mouse is great in a lot of uses, but not in this specific circumstance. Okay, now what we're going to do first, we're going to use Slash. We're going to shrink down this to be smaller than the wrinkles that we just did and we're going to start in the wrinkle and go up okay and as with the regular wrinkle we're gonna smooth out the top of what we just did <coughs> because that's the way wrinkles go. We're going to do this to every one of these pressure wrinkles, these, these stress wrinkles. Also, while these would be found under on the underside of the uh, belt as well, we're not going to put any there. because they've got a different kind of wrinkle that's going to kind of override the pressure wrinkle. And the 
this one is now that we've done this we're going to actually do the reverse we're going to take a slightly weaker version and we're going to exag oh that's still too strong and let's make it smaller we're going to exaggerate the tops of these wrinkles make them sharp you see wrinkles are not round they tend towards being sharp cloth folds and if you look at your cloth it doesn't go beer where it wrinkles it goes beer kind of angled and I think we need to make them a little bit stronger and then you also kind of want to make the underside of the wrinkle a little bit stronger than the upper side if you can reason for this is because there's a thing called gravity and the other reason that we do this is because it helps when someone goes to dry brush this cloth this helps that brush to catch on the edge. Dry brushes catch sharp edges easier than uh, smooth ones. Okay. That's those wrinkles. Now on the bottom of the thing we're actually going to have hanging wrinkles which in this case it's going to be mostly hanging down like this because he's kind of turned And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead also, this needs to have a little hook. We're going to smooth out the top, the ends of, both ends of these wrinkles, mostly down at the bottom. The direction for these wrinkles to go was chosen not arbitrarily, but because of the direction he himself is facing. And we're going to go over here and smooth off this wrinkle. Yay. Now we're going to go back to our slash brush. And we're going to make it just a little bit bigger. We have to drop that to six. I said six. Thank you and we're going to draw on the bottom edge of all of these wrinkles again because and then we're going to smooth the top edge the reason for this is again wrinkles are affected by gravity and that's what most of these wrinkles are is gravity wrinkles these are wrinkles because they're hanging Oi, I got wrinkles because I know how it's hanging. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and smooth out the tops before I add the edges on these wrinkles. Make things a little bit better. Okay. And now this one comes down. This one comes from up here. Oh. Down. 
and a smooth, little bit of smoothing. Comes up here and comes down. Also, something that's gotten kind of common recently is a technique that I actually was not aware of when I was younger called zenithal priming. Will react to the, those kind of wrinkles better because of the way that they have a sharper underside, although still well within most printers' uh, capabilities, and a s shallower upper side. You will notice I am occasionally wincing as I do this. That is because, yes, my back is still killing me. Okay. Now, we need to go ahead and focus on our toe caps. I'm going to go back to inflate. I'm going to shrink these back down. I'm only going to give four bolts on these, uh, uh, or bolt heads on these. Actually, I need to sh take, take off both. I need to shift the focal shift back the other way, because these are going to be more of a flathead. One. Hmm. Oh. Two. Three. Four. And I don't know if you heard that, but somebody next door is honking. I don't mind. They're, we've got good neighbors, so... Uh, to the point where they even invited Mom and me to their oldest daughter's quinceanera. Okay. Now I'm going to frame out. Okay. Make the parts visible. I can go ahead and delete my uh, scaling things. Now, there's pretty much... I gotta do the hands, I gotta do the face, and I gotta do the crossbow. Yes, the crossbow, because I had an idea. I'm going to geometry, I'm going to subdivide it a couple times. Delete lower, frame, select this, and hide everything else. On the crossbow, on the crossbow, on the crossbow, I had an idea. I'm going to use the clay build-up brush and I'm going to turn this crossbow into a fist. Okay, I'm going to shrink this, and I'm going to turn off the alpha, and I'm going to add in – no, that's too big. I'm going to smooth this a bit, bring this more into 
more of an organic shape and less of this clay brush version. Okay. So this crossbow's a fist. I'm just going to smooth this just a bit. Smooth this quite a bit right here. Now we're going to use a slash brush, sub 9, and we're going to sharpen. That's oh, too small. We're going to sharpen the border between the thumb and the rest of the fingers and outline the thumb better. Also going to outline the fingers here. And draw around here. In case you didn't know, the, what this is that the fist is grabbing hold of, if this was a real crossbow, there would actually be a gap between the fist and the outer edge, because that's where you would put your foot to cock the crossbow. Now we're going to go back to a standard brush, too strong, and we're going to draw the tendons in the back of the fist. Okay. Let me frame out, zoom out, and there. If you look closely, it's a fist. I did that because I felt like doing something a little bit fancier than normal for this guy. And now let's make the rest of it visible. Frame. Now, we need to make the rest of this visible. Okay. Yeah, that's all in pretty good spots. Yeah. So now we can make the... Let's go and do, do work on the actual hands now that we've finished that fake hand. So we're going to start off with the one pointing. We're going to start off... We're going to use Inflate Tool at about 10. And we're going to return the focal length to zero, or focal shift. We're going to make sure, okay, no lazy mouse. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our mouse is about the size of the fingers, which it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw on the knuckles first. I'm going to start off with the knuckles mostly even, the middle knuckle a little bit farther forward, and the pinky knuckle a little bit farther back. Then, I'm going to, for guidance purposes, I'm drawing on the next two knuckles for the index, but then this knuckle goes here, goes back a little, goes back a lot. And this knuckle goes here, goes back a little, goes back a lot. Then, we smooth the spaces between the knuckles. What that ends up doing is it ends up straightening up that finger joint, except for the index, which is already straight. And we have something that looks less like a bent Vienna sausage and more like a bent finger along the bones. We're going to do the same thing on the tip. Okay, we're then going to draw the tendons. Now the thing is, on most FDM printers, you're not going to be able to see these tendons. What they will do is they will change the shape 
of the mass of the back of the hand enough that you will. By the same token, we're going to draw on the bits of the palm that again, you're not going to see this really that well on most FDM prints. But it's going to be enough that you get the impression that it helps the shape look more natural. You know, even the, you know, you got to be, be aware of these things. Even things that you don't think would be seen, they affect the shape overall. We're going to, one, two, make it a little bit bigger knuckle. One for the uh, thumb knuckles because they kind of need it and draw a line coming off the thumb knuckle. Okay, that's our pointing pointing hand. Let's smooth out these arm bits just a bit and definitely smooth out down here. It'll round it off a bit more. Ah! Frame! Yeah. That's that hand. Now we're going to do the hand that's holding the crossbow. Okay. Knuckle, 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 knuckle. One thing to remember is that the middle finger and ring finger are the same length. There are people who are have the middle finger longer and others or not ring index finger longer and others who have the ring finger longer. Okay. That I can tell I had them these too far forward. So, yeah. Index and ring are about the same length and then and of course the pinky is the smallest there is something I have not done yet to the right hand that I will do when it comes time with the left I just wanted to make this do handled uh, one step at a time on both fingers And then, er, 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 and smooth it out. And then, one, two, make it bigger over here. Also, we need to gently make under here a little bit thicker because when the thumbs bend, they have a tendency to lose mass, at least in this particular iteration of thumbhood. Thumb day, my prince will come. All right, now what I have left to do, I take slash. I'm going to shrink it a little bit and I'm going to exaggerate the split between the fingers. Uh, okay. Now the thing is, this whole bit with the hands, you do it to everything. It doesn't matter if it's a princess or an orc, a bard or a zombie, because all that happens is you don't leave the knuckles as prominent on the more delicate phalanges. Phalanges, isn't that such a wonderful word? Yeah. Oh. Yes, phalanges. Would that mean that someone who gives a finger a lot is a philanthropist? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to have to remember that one. I just made it up and it's so funny. Yes, and here. 
Okay, and that is our hands. Nice, huh? So far he's looking really nice. But I gotta do that head. Especially compared to the other sergeant and the boss. That head is lackluster. That head is quite lackluster. And yet again, I have nobody watching. Isn't that just so wonderful? I'm on the verge of just, like, not doing it anymore. Because I used to get quite a few people watching, and, and now I don't. I'm on the verge... Yay. <sighs> people don't care. Anyway. I could probably say almost anything I wanted on this. And nobody would say anything to me about it. Yeah. But let's zoom in. I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do all three orcs tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it one way or the other. And let's shrink the mouse and re-exaggerate the eye. Oh. I need these eyes to be sharp. Every girl's crazy about a sharp-eyed orc. Or not. So I guess it is time to be as goofy as possible because, I mean, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and give him a little bit of a nostril. And smooth it just a little. Oh, too much, both ways. Let's make this a negative standard brush. And smooth out down here. smooth out the top here. Alright, now we're going back to the slash because almost everything we're going to do from here is going to be the slash brush on the face, that is. No. Sharpen the edge of the brow and smooth it just... Oh! No. Not just a little. Just a little. Thank you very much. Now we're going to shrink. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to inflate the mouth around the fangs. Around the tusks, rather. Because we need to add the rest of the bottom teeth. Unlike the uh, standard orcs, these guys are big enough that their teeth are at least partially visible. And then one, two, three. Now we're going to go to a move topological again. We're going to drag this up a little bit. Again, the tips of them may not print well on FDM, but the fact that there is something there will, will be visible. Now we go back to inflate. We're going to increase the intensity just a little bit, and we're going to... Smooth the top of this. And then we're going to just create further teeth. And 
now we need to go ahead we're gonna inflate we're gonna inflate the uh, lip around the around the fangs just like his fellow archers had no got it Okay, now... Oh, too much force there. Then, I'm going to shrink this and add a bit under here. Once again, to really emphasize that there's a fang growing out of his jaw, or a tusk, rather. Okay. Let's smooth that out because it doesn't need to be there. Now the last thing to do is the ears and the mouth and the front of the mouth, the lip. Okay, the ears, I can smooth out a little bit here. Now I start off with a slash. I come I need to make it more intense. Alright. I come down here, loop down and there. I smooth it out again over here and then a light sharpening of that shape. I'm gonna go back in and just do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so bring it in. Down. Okay, let's shrink this a bit. Go to inflate and alt. Just kind of draw in a few lines. What's going to happen then is we're going to hit smooth and smooth out that area. That gives us a bit more of a uh, an ear shape. Okay, now we go back to slash. We exaggerate that filtrum slash. Smooth it just a little so that it's clearly there. We're going to make a larger one, just ever so slightly, very faint. Now we're going to shrink and we're going to draw on a couple following parallel or perpendicular to the mouth to the muscle of the mouth which is actually a form of sphincter. We're also going to go ahead and draw one line down the middle here. Draw on a couple of uh, age lines. and then hit them with the smooth just enough. Once again, they won't be visible per se, but you'll somehow feel them, especially if you've got a um, resin printer. Okay, this is our boss. Our sergeant at arms for the archery we are now going to merge everything down and frame it and zoom out this is what we get for a sergeant of archery 
the only thing left is to append a new item and this is going to be our base now as you can see that should fit on the base but one thing we have to do is we have to go ahead and lower it well first let's frame it zoom in on the base first thing we have to do is increase you know increase the polygon count of it so it looks right when we deal with it delete lower now we go to deformations and offset and we want to make sure we're offsetting in Y and not X and whoop. negative 0.5 and make sure no there yeah okay now we need to move it forward so we need to offset by Z and we need to move it over on the X and this is where your boss orc is we're going to once again merge down and now we're going back to geometry we're going to sub we're going to dynamesh it again but at 1024 we want to make sure we get all the details dynamesh and processing mesh spaces and it's 2.216 million polygons and it's one solid manifold mesh however that's 2.216 million polygons I don't know about you but you know I, half the slicers I know will gawk at, at a third of that so we need to go ahead and slice it down okay So what we're going to do, we're going to use, it's called Decimation Master. I click on 75K, or 35K. This will reduce it to 35,000 triangles, uh, 35,000 points rather, and 70,000 triangles. But when it's done, it'll be hard to tell unless you're really zoomed in that it's been decimated that much because they will be following the uh, lines of the model on flat areas like the top of the base very few polygons areas like the eyes and the face a lot more and our good orc archer sergeant or what did I call it orc sergeant archer orc bow sergeant is now been reduced by this routine as I'm waiting for it to write file to disk read well reading go Z to 70,175 triangles and yet as I'm doing this it's hard to see where they all went until you zoom in and turn on frame you can see they're all one there are various size polygons that are designed to fit the surface they're on turn off that and now we export it because this is ready to go orc bosarge that's what I called it so export Orc Bow Sarge figure. And that is our Orc Bow Sergeant. 
him and his crossbow and his back mount or hip mounted quiver is in charge of all those archers with their back mounted quivers ain't that cool yep I'm going back to here now the next thing that I'm going to do is the first spearman okay I actually did spearman too and that's what these guys are going to be this, this next group of uh, critters all right now before I do I just want to go ahead and double check yep I've got two people in here I got someone else in here with me and he's a, a lurker but for 87 followers I think I'd have a little bit more people watching on the night of making three orcs uh, and apparently not anyway all right give me just a moment here I've got my brains going bloop, bloop, bloop. Hmm. Okay. Like I said, this first orc is going to be a spearman. With these two, unlike with the uh, archers I did, I'm going to be checking out, um, trying to do different forms of male. M-A-I-L-L-E, not M-A-L-E. Uh, so that one will have scales on this hauberk, the other will, I'll try to make them chain. For example, this one will probably be the one that's uh, going to have the uh, chain. No, he's going to have the scales. I'm going to do the chain on the other one. So let me go ahead and um, it looks like I do not have my camera set to auto light auto compensation for light because as it's getting darker out here yeah and I gotta turn these off because their batteries are dying and they're not giving me any real yeah so now I switch back to ZBrush oh look I've already loaded his body and I've got to append his uh... come on append gotta append first his skirt Or experiment skirt. A pen. A pen. <clears throat> append. Select and import or experiment props. He's got his shield on his back. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to the skirt. We're going to hide the props. We're going to divide the skirt until it's smooth delete lower and we're going to divide him until he's smooth delete lower well, did that do it? yeah so now we're going to the sub tool and we're going to merge down and now we're going back to geometry and we're doing a 768 dynamesh we're going to smooth out that little belly. I really need to fix that little belly thing on my orcs. Uh, smooth the areas that right here. Okay, once again, we're smoothing off where the uh, the buttocks and this one little underarm muscle. It doesn't do this that badly on the males, but it on the normal males, but it does on the orcs, mostly because of the deformations in that area to begin with. In the same way, the butt doesn't normally get this weird and pointed on the regular males, just on the orcs. 
so I smooth out. I'm going to hide the arm and this hand and the fingers. Make it easier to reach this. Okay, and then I'm also going to smooth out the chest again because he's not wearing spandex. More importantly, he's not bare chested. Because there are quite a few orcs who would be bare chested, I did leave that detail intact on the base mesh before posing him. Well, not before posing, but in the base mesh to begin with. But this particular orc is not. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on the belt so I don't forget it. Yeah! Wait, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm going to zoom in the inner mouth. He's not going to need the huge, you know, the extra teeth that the sergeant did. But I do need to bring in the inner mouth so that it's not as much of a printing hazard. Yes, a printing hazard. Add, not subtract. It, 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 and I smooth it all out. Yeah, there we go. Frame it. Okay, and now it's time to start working on his clothing. Like I said, he's going to be wearing the scale armor. Now, the thing is, unlike the shirt for the archers, these guys, actually, let me go ahead and I'm going to... Oh, too strong. I'm going to kind of push this in a little bit. And smooth it out quite a bit more. Because his armor is going to act like a girdle. That's it. That's the excuse. Yeah, that's the ticket. Any of y'all remember that from Saturday Night Live? Yeah. But we're going ahead and smoothing it all. Smoothing. We're going to very gently, and now we're very gently going to be dealing a few more areas in here to kind of smooth it all back to normal. Adding a little bit of chaos to everything. We're using the mouse to do the smoothing instead of the tablet because the mouth, mad put the mouth! The mouse is always at 100%. Okay, now, we're going to shrink the mouse. No, we're not. We're, this is going to be a good size. This is a good size. We're going to draw. Well, first, me and my broke back. Nothing to do with mountains. I just have a bad back. And I'll lower that foot to the ground so I can have my tablet even in my lap. We're going to go ahead and we're going to mask off this. And then pause for a second and move this cat to the floor where he needs to be. No, you do not need to be jumping into my lap while I'm trying to do work. What can you say? At least this one doesn't do that anymore anymore and then continue on with the uh, masking continue on with the masking as I lose what little wits I had I'm crazy 
Yes, I know I sing like a wounded foghorn. But that just means that it hurts you more than it does me. You know, but I'm not your parent, so I can't do that. One thing that does get kind of annoying about ZBrush is that it moves its center of rotation to wherever the cursor was last used on a model. So now it'll be down here, which means that you end up very often having a model that rotates weird and kind of creeps to the other side of the screen. Like that. I need to see this side. Okay. What we're going to do now is just like we did before. We're going to remove the mask that's on the thighs. Because we're making the bottom trim of the hauberk. Instead of shirt this time, it's a hauberk. And this time, instead of being only a 0.2 extraction, it's going to be a full-on 0.3 extraction. Because we're also going to have to be dealing with scales. Scales! And this is actually going to make it take a lot longer. And it also means our belt is going to be a 0.4 extraction. And after we do that, after we put the scales in place, we're probably going to have to go in and move the belt a little. Okay. Now, this frame. Unlike the shirt, we're going to give him no sleeves. I'm going to come up here. And yes, you eagle-eyed viewers have spotted it. I'm doing this so I have less to worry about doing scales on and so that I don't have to worry about the transition from downward-facing to outward-facing scales. Yay! Go me! Yeah. Go fuzz butt. Okay. Move down here. And move it over here. And then we're going to come down here. And rotate up a bit. We're going to kind of trim this off. Okay, and then we're going to do the neck. And there we go. And once again, we've got to clean up under the chin here. And a little bit right here. We're going to frame out. And now we are going to go back to our tool. We are going to extract 0 0.03 thick extract accept and deselect the selections and here deselect the selections now these guys we're going to go into geometry we're going to dynamesh them at 128 and then divide them a couple times Okay, now we're going back to here, and now we're going to make the belt. Okay, and yeah, that was another uh, twinge of the back. 
We're going to make the belt now, but we're going to have to hide it when we're doing the scales. And it goes up and down. And then down over here. Down to the small of the back. Over the buttocks area. And then kind of connect it back and then make sure I didn't get any in the arm I'm going to erase this part right here because that looks bad and go again a, a more even blend and we're going to extract it at point 0.4 Extract, accept, deselect, deselect. Now, before we make our buckle, before we do anything else, we're going to hide these. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the scales. I'm going to leave it at standard, but I'm going to make it drag dot. And I'm going to import an alpha. What alphas are is they are black and white images that uh, shape how it's how how it moves. So make this big, make this intense, and I'm going to have to flip it vertically. You see, that's a scale. But that's nowhere near intense enough for what we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the intensity again. 60. Yes. That's pretty intense. But it's not big enough. We need them big. Okay. Now, that's good enough. I'm going to turn on the seams because the scales are going to end at the seams. So start off bringing in the scales. And what's going to happen is I'm just going to lay in the scales on top of each other. This will be a little bit tedious, but it's better than the alternative of sit there, sitting there and actually mapping out where each scale would be. It also better fits the more erratic, orky method of, Oi, does it fit and do it there? Uh, don't know if we got enough scales. Oh, well, do it anyway. Whoa! I'm going to make the, I'm going to hide the arm again and the fingers and the thumb because I want to make sure I can get in here. Yeah. And then we're going to start doing another row. And here again we are experiencing the mesh creep as it's drifting over towards where the last scale was placed. Causing us to have to constantly move this figure. Now what I'm going to do from here, now that I've got the basics... Oh! This is where it gets tricky is when it's in the middle. 
what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do just the ones in the front, then the ones in the back, and then the sides to fix them. So, oh. So once again, orcs place these scales where they fit, not necessarily where they're in the best position to protect them. You know, now if I was going to be doing an elf in scale mail, I'd probably have used a different kind of alpha. One that is more of a stamp of carefully placed scales and cover anything that's not affected by it with miscellaneous things like you know more straps or an armored plate here or there fancy symbols and jewelry you know things like that Okay, I see a, I see a problem. I'm about to hide the head and jaw. Oop. To get this in here. down here just to yeah frame now let's do the back which there's a there's a good bit more of the back than there was of the front despite the belly cuz ox is like that you know Okay. go ahead and fill this in here yes this is not the higher form of war that Thor referred to in Avengers this is just you know oi I'm stronger than you. I'll hit you harder with a big rock, or maybe a stick with a bl with a pointy bit at the end. Except with metal instead of rocks and just sticks. Okay, and then just because. frame still a couple places we need some scales but not many and I need to turn these off there turn them on again yeah there we go scales and he's got scales and we turn on the belt and we're going to need to see where we need to move the belt or do we 
Okay, no we don't. We do not need to move the belt anywhere. Yay! And we're going to zoom in. And we're going to mask off a chunk of the belt to turn it into what will be his belt buckle. And that's going to be extracted at point zero 0.02. Yeah, that's good enough. Accept. Stretch that. Select the belt and deselect. And we're going to dynamash the belt at one at 256. Dynamash. Did I did I forget? Yes, I forgot to dynamash the belt. So we go back with the belt selected. Geometry. Dynamash at 256. Divide a couple times. Delete lower. Select the buckle. Dynam divide a couple times. Delete lower. Now, one thing we're not going to have to worry about for this guy, and that's uh, clothing wrinkles. I don't think scale mail can wrinkle. So, next thing up. Hmm, boots. Alright. This guy, we're going to give him fur boots, okay? He's going to have boots for days. Yeah, I said it. I'm sorry. I, I, I know that. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to give him... It's a very thin cuff. Around both upper calves. That cuff is going to get extracted. And then it's going to be made to look like tufts of fur. He is not going to get hobnails on his boots or iron toe, toe clips because he hasn't earned them yet. That's why he's he hasn't been proven that he's good enough to fight without armor. And the only way you can get more armor is to prove you're good enough to don't need it. Wait, what? Yeah, I said it. Frame. And we're going to extract at point zero 0.03. Extract. Accept. Deselect, deselect, frame. Now the way we're going to do it here is we're going to do it very similar. We're going to use alphas. But this time the alphas are going to be fur patch alphas. Oh, I forgot I have to take these. Yeah, I have to dynamesh them as they are and then subdivide them until they're a good bit. Yeah, there we go. And we need to do this on inflate, not on standard. Drag dot. too big and make this really big so er, we're gonna put these at random spots but not too close to each other and at angles some slight angles not huge ones Then we're going to draw in, load in another alpha. We're going to, we want to make these as distinct as possible. And this one is going here. And this one's going here. I'm make, move it until it doesn't cross over. This one's going, let's bring it up here. and one in the middle here. Okay. 
I'm going to move it over. I'm going to put one right smack dab right in the middle here. And then one right up against the sky. Yeah. Now we're going to get a different one. Yes, the, be the more of these alphas I use, the better. Because the more variation there will be. Okay. Click that one. And now this one's going to go right here. And right here. Undo. Right. Let's undo. Let's shrink it a little bit. Hold on just a second. Sorry, minor emergency, I'll be right back.
Okay, sorry about that. Had some issues here happening. And so now it's time to go back to our boots. And then going to draw in another tuft down here. And then another one up here. I'll get to that part later. And we're going to go for one more alpha. We're going to go for this one. Well, you can't see it. It's more of a single strand. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to make it smaller, and there's an alpha for kind of the bottom edge, you might say. Uh, where'd it go? I saw it. Oh, swear, I saw it. It was right here. There it is. And we're going to... Oh, too small. This is just to get some of these larger bottom areas to be look not so bare. No. There we go. And now we got to do it on the other one. Actually, let's make this one even bigger. No. No. Yeah, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And right here. That's good enough. And he's got furry boots. Okay. Now, there's a few things we still have to do. We need to, we really should give him something on his arms. You know, whether it's bracers or upper arm doodlies. How about we give him a, right, he's going to have a shield on his back. His shield would normally be in his left hand, so his right arm would have a shoulder pad of some kind. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to, first of all, with the inflate, we need to turn off the alpha and turn it back to dots, and then go to standard, go back to dots, turn off the alpha. And we're going to shrink it a little bit. And we're going to draw on where our shoulder pad will be. And then we're going to clean, oh, shrink, clean off the edge a little bit down here. And down here. And we're going to extract this at point f at point four because this is going to be a big thick pauldron. Draw on that, draw on that, and then once again, as usual, we're going to dynamash at two fifty six and then subdivide it and delete lower. Then we're going to take 
our move topological and we're going to get big. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the corner of this plate and bring it out. It's his shoulder armor after all. He needs it out. And we're going to grab this and move it in. Okay. Now we're going to go back to standard, shrink it down a bit. I'm going to make it a lot weaker. Shrink it down a good bit. V sub. And we're going to bring that in and then smooth it a bit. Yeah, there we go. Now we need to use our slash add and this will help us refine the outer edge of this plate. And then we're going to smooth it a little because while that outer edge is now refined it needs to be not quite so thin because it won't print well. Okay. Now we're going to load in, or not load in, but make visible his gear. And we're going to subdivide the gear. This to make it easier to deal with when the time comes. Delete lower. We're not going to do anything on the back of the shield because people love being able to paint what they want on the shields. Now on the orc himself, we now have to deal with the fact that he's got noodle arms and he's supposed to be an orc warrior. So we're going to do some very rough basic overlays of the musculature. That's way too high. Do some very basic rough overlays of the musculature that would be found on the arm. And includes the bicep, a little bit of the tricep, and some of the forearm. Okay. Now we're not going to be super defined on these muscles because he doesn't need them. He's, again, He's an orc boy, not Conan the Barbarian. And yes, I said Barbarian, because, you know, orcs in 1st edition D&D looked like pigmen. And that's actually what inspired the Gamorrean Guards in Star Wars. It was these pigmen in D&D that, you know, they're, they're big and pig and porky. I don't mean like the movie. And yes, there was a movie called Porky's. If you don't know Porky's as the movie, oh well. Yeah, see, those arms look a lot better now. A lot more orky. So we're going to zoom in. And we're going to do what we did before with the hands. You always want to remember the hands. The reason for this is that with hands, that's something people see every day. Their own and others. Now what we're doing is we're closing up the hands in the middle of this open fist because we don't want the it'd make it a difficult printing job if we didn't. Now, everyone looks at hands. If the hands don't look like hands, they look like bent Vienna sausages, it's going to be obvious. Okay? So we need to make sure that we're doing hands and not bent Vienna sausages. Whether it's for empty fists or the hands holding the spear. We're also going to end up you know, doing the divide between the fingers. Now, 
let's increase the maximum blend in these finger And so you always want to have good hands. Having good hands is an attention to detail thing. If, you got, if you're remembering to do your hands, you're probably remembering everything else. And once again, these tendons probably aren't going to be seen on an FDM, but we still want them there. And then one, two, three, four, Oh, way too big. Okay. Now we're going to frame out this so we can get a zoom in on the other hand. Yeah, you can see the difference in the two hands. And trust me, you can tell when you print it too. Some I've seen miniatures where I could not tell where the hands were. They were bent around the sword, but that's all I could tell. So, adding our knuckles. And yes, I used to do this on 28mm sculpts too, not just on ones for 3D printing. Well, as we can see, I did not far enough away. And ring equal to middle and pinky shorter than the rest. Ring, or ring equal to the index, not middle. And then blend them in. Blend them in, blend them in, blend them in. And then I'm going to go back after I've done both hands to dig the divide between the fingers. Okay, and here we are. Now, the thumb, well, let me blend that in. The thumb is double do, double tap there. On here, with a height. We're also going to have to gently inflate on the inside here, because got that problem with the thumb bend that I told you about. Okay, now we go to slash, we shrink back down, and we cut. We cut. Oh, got to be on Z sub. Okay, we cut. Alrighty, now we got to go to these fingers. And one deep cut here. And a deep cut here. And a deep cut here. And then the deep cuts where they're kind of hard to see because of the rest of the figure. So the way these are, I'm going to give them just a very faint smoothing. And then another deep cut. Because they got inflated when I went to... Oh, 
Okay. Frame out. And there is our hands, which actually help lend a bit of meanness to these orcs. Now, this guy, as we can see, has one brow down, one brow up. So we're going to go to our move topological. We're going to make the mouse bigger, or not that big. We're going to bring up the, the brow here, bring down the brow there, but bring it out a bit. Again, this is an expression that may not be seen on an FDM printer. But it will be distinct and seeable on a uh, resin printer. And we're going to shrink this down. We're going to dig our slash in for the ears. We're not going to be as detailed about it because, again, it's a, such, a, such a small thing to paint. It'll It'll be seen more by the fact that it catches the paint. You know? And it may not print at all on an FDM. But we're going to leave it like that. We're going to dig that in. A couple of shallow grooves just for that frame. And we have our spearmen. Yep, spearman number one, done. Yay! How's it looking? So now, as usual, we are going to merge down. Merging down. And then append a new subtool, which is going to be our base. And as usual, we're going to have to subdivide it a couple times. And then we're going to have to offset it. We're going to offset by, Z, by Y first. Whoop. I'm going to try and be as close to... There we go. And now we're going to offset Z. And let's see what we got here. Yep, he's fully on that base. Even the spear is. That is our Spearman Orc. So now what we got to do is we're going to go ahead and merge him down again so that we have our single solitary whoop wrong way single solitary uh, tool or spearman and then we're going to geometry and we're going to do a 1028 well, 1024 dynamesh from 1.745 million faces we go to 1 point eight three four not too bad and it's now one solid mesh and now the final frontier for miniatures as usual we go to decimate it to thirty five thousand yay Computing, please wait. I hope I didn't screw it up, because it happens sometimes. Five. Four. Hmm. Yep. If it takes too long in that initial step, then there's a problem. You can't see it, it's underneath my camera, but it's happening right here. Right right behind my, right between my eyes then we're gonna undo the dynamesh and change that to 
880 resolution Dynamesh. We and we're down to 1.352 million polygons. Still far too many to slice, but again, it's now a single solid piece. So we're going to decimate the 35,000 points and 70,000 triangles. And there it goes, it went straight past calculating to actually processing it. You see the little orange bar right here. It's steadily growing across the screen. And I have a furball that is trying to get into my lap. But no, little buddy! Go into the floor and go. Shoot. And it's reading the file and bang! Exactly 35,000 points and 70,045 polygons. This is our finished Spearman number one with his shield on his back. So we go up here and we export into our broadcast miniatures folder as Orc Spearman 01 figure. Save. And there we have it. And now we turn up. Well, we got to turn off Dynamax because we've kind of forgot to. Next up is Spearman number two. The final miniature for tonight. Orc Spearman number two. This is what we are starting with as our poor little orc spearman number number two pardon me i got hiccups now too oh yay before i do anything with him i have to hide these fingers and inflate very gently inside the thumb Okay. Now I frame out. I'm all, I'm going to go ahead and also hide the hands to smooth that area of the body, smooth out the smooth away the the boob. because he is going to be ha is also going to be having light armor but instead of scale I'm going to try one more time to do a proper proper male okay so let's get these particular aspects of the of the body smoothed out also with the uh the buttocks. The buttocks will be hid. The botox will be hidden by the actual skirt, but oh well. And under here, okay. There we go. That's good enough for now. Now we're going to import. No, we're going to append and import the skirt. That's where his skirt went. And we're going to append and import the props. As you can see, this one is holding his spear in his right hand and his shield in his left instead of on his back. So this is going to be a lot of male area to cover. I'm going to hide these... The mer well, I'm going to select the skirt first, give it one level of subdivision. Now select him, merge down, and now I'm going to smooth out this area here. 
because of the way he, he poses. I'm going to have to get that smooth. And it's, it's not so noticeable on the human and elven figures when I do this. And it can be easily disguised. But on this figure, at this point in time, it's pretty blatant. And we're going to divide it a few times until it's nice and smooth. Delete lower. And we're going to Dynamesh 768. Dynamesh. Yay! Now... We're gonna go ahead and smooth out. Now... Where the, uh... Shrink the mat. Shrink the, this, this thing. We're gonna have it at full smooth. Thank you very much. And use the Again, use the mouse and not the uh, stylus to do this area because we want it at 100% smoothing to blend this in as much as possible. I'm probably going to do the same kind of boots for him that I did for the sergeant for the archers. That is, just cuff high. Okay, now, here we have our buddy. Our buddy, our buddy, he's an orc, wouldn't you know our buddy. And we're going to... draw a belt on him. We're going to make sure we didn't get any extra on the hands. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Zoom in. Yes, I did. Right there. All right, on the tip of the thumb. Erase it. Frame out. Frame out. And let's make the belt a thing. Because belts should always be a thing. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of my pants dropping down. Now, because of the way mail works, we're not going to have to worry about sticking out too far. So this can be only a point three, Except. And now we're going to make the mouse a bit bigger again. And we're going to go back to here. Gonna deselect. And we need to make it just a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, once as we have with the other ones, we're going to now draw on the tr area for the trim. And since what we're drawing on here is only halfway on size 26, we're going to need to make about 13 or 14 brush size for the shoulder trims. As you can see, the techniques I use pretty much apply to whatever I'm making. And I use the same basic concepts, if not, you know, the actual specific applications for almost any basic miniature I make. There are other things that I would do for things that are fancier. For example, if I wanted to make sure that I had a proper 
uh, engraving on a knight's armor. I might go into Photoshop and make an alpha like I did before, but this time instead of for a scale, it would be for like say a rising phoenix on the breast that'll cover the breastplate. I did something like that for the orc sergeant for the sword and shield orcs. I made a skull so that he had a skull on his shield that was nice and proper and orky. Now one thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to use that, uh, when it comes time I'm going to be adding on a belt buckle using that same brush that made the skull on the sergeant but instead of the skull there's another option in that brush that I made and that's a gemstone with a setting no less frame okay and now I'm on 14 because I had to be to erase the leg parts I'm gonna zoom in and now I'm going to draw on the shoulder what okay Make sure there's no spare. Okay. And now the neck. Yay, the neck. This one, however, I can actually draw on the entire neck because his head is not going near his chest. So, there it goes. a lot of cleanup I don't have to do because his neck is not against his chest. Now these are going to be 0 0.02. Extract, accept, deselect, deselect. Yeah, cats, what can you do? And we're going to hide the hands, this hand at least, and this arm, and this arm, whoop, what the heck, Now, yes, this does leave a hole in the chest. I also need, just for visibility's sake, I need to change display properties to have double-faced polygons, just so I can see a little bit better, which gives us an opportunity here. If you look inside, you'll see that belt actually goes into the mesh just as far as it comes out also gives us an opportunity to remember I haven't dynameshed these things yet so geometry dynamesh 128 divide divide delete lower get the belt no not the not those yeah the belt dynamesh 256 divide, divide, delete lower. And now we select him again. Now what we're going to do here, I'm going to do a hand-drawn technique for uh, 
male. And what that is, is I'm going to draw holes where the male would be. And then draw on the links themselves. So I need to turn off Lazy Mouse. No, not 20. 100. And I'm just going to draw these holes and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw with the inflate tool like this no it doesn't look right Yeah, that. Now, I'm going to load in another alpha, and that is going to be this mail open. Turn on Lazy Mouse, Lazy Step 1. No. Lazy Step point 0.8. And let's go, uh, yeah, I need the larger, the thicker alpha. That's... Alright, I need to make that more intense, so we Yeah, here we go. I'm also going to, while I'm thinking about it, hide the belt. Yeah, this is looking a lot better than I was to my hand drawn version. And we're drawing And it's kind of erratic, but you can always explain it away as battle damage.
Mm -hmm. And sorry if I'm being a little bit quiet. It's I'm trying to concentrate while I do this so it comes out at least halfway decent. And Zoom out again. And anyone else having people already launching off fireworks for Hol for Fourth of July? Yeah, see if this wasn't orcs you know, or some other way to explain away battle damage. You know, it'd be I'd be a little bit grumpy at how erratic it's turning out, but with orcs you got some leeway. It's looking really, really good for orky male. And now we can kind of zoom out a bit and start working instead of all the way around we can go just from side to side on top and bottom. Which will make things a lot faster. Yeah. And there we have the chain mail. And let's go ahead and make the belt visible. And yes, the belt covers over the chain. Excellent. Excellent. Now, is anyone else watching? No, it's still just me. Oh, yay. I'm so happy I've had that literally zero comments. Yay. See, next up we need to go ahead and let's give him the arm muscles that we did before. No, let's do the let's do his boots. And we're gonna have the same problem that we did before. We're not problem, same thing that we did before. We're going to give him just high boots. Make it kind of low. Yeah. Okay. Now the thing is, we're going to be not quite as thick with these boots as we were with the uh, sergeants. Mostly because we're experimenting to see what we can get away with in, the, in a design and partly because well he's not as rich in orky funds as a as the sergeant would be 
so he may not be able to afford the thicker full-on bull hide. And I need to make sure that it doesn't go behind the... Yeah. Okay, and now we are going to extract it at 0 0.02. Accept. And we are going to go to these guys, frame them. Geometry, Dynamesh of 256. Dynamesh, divide. Wait, wait, wait. Before we divide, we need to go ahead and do an intense smooth around the bottom. And now we're going to reduce the smoothing strength and kind of blend it in with what's above them. And now that. And now we're going to move topological. We're going to pull these in before we move them and this is orc number three if you've just joined me you've already missed a previous spear wielding orc and the sergeant for the orc archers with his fisted crossbow yes Okay, now we're going to divide it a couple times. We're going to delete it. I'm actually going to wait on doing those boots until after we get our uh, the rest of it done. Oh, and it's going to be a... Mm. Sorry, my back is acting up again. Ah. Grab a sodi. Okay, I, now I know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and increase his arm muscles back the same way I did the, the previous one. I'm going to go ahead and go to the inflation tool. And I'm going to make sure it's not too high, nor does it have an alpha. And I'm going to shrink the mouse a little and inflate. Yeah, uh, turn off the lazy mouse. I'm going to inflate. Yeah. Now, there's certain muscles and certain patterns that look real. Even if they're not exactly anatomically correct, because us geeks, as longtime readers of comic books, have seen them in the comics. But these are, you know, they are based on anatomical structures, and so they're not too far off. Because remember, most of us geeks don't have enough muscle to really tell the difference between a deltoid and a tricep. There are exceptions. I mean, I am a former active duty Marine, after all. But, you know, just for the most part. I am. Yeah, those arms are a bit more muscular now. Okay. Let's go ahead and make everything visible. Okay. 
spear and shield. I'm going to take those and I'm going to go ahead and subdivide them a couple times just to make them nice and smooth. But that's where this guy's going to be. So next up is going to be hands. Now the thing is, I normally say even if it's not going to be seen, do it because you know, it, it, it helps. In this case, there's one thing that's really not going to be seen ever because it's physically inside something else, and that's the back of this hand. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do... Well, it's not enough. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do knuckles on this part of the hand and here just so that they have something to smooth against but most of the rest of this hand can be as is you know so yep and then on this side And then I'm going to go ahead and take care of it slashing now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back to inflate. And now we get to do the full hand. Zoom out. And knuckle. 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 Uh, tendon. 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 Smooth. Yeah. Like I said. Alright. And now... Just so I can... Nope. That's not good spots. Here and here. Yeah, those are good spots. And then we just deal with the fact that the fingers are different sizes by staggering these knuckles. We also need to inflate the inside of that thumb. So we need to go ahead and swell that. It'll be properly dealt with and smoothed out when we go to... Alright, now we smooth a couple passes on each back of each finger. And then here here. I've already said many times why I do this, but again, if you've just joined me, this is to smooth out the actual individual joints in the finger to make them more angular and less like a, you know, a, well, I said it earlier, a Vienna sausage. And then we come down here and we're digging in between the fingers just to make the gaps between them clearly evident. And here. Whoop. Let's smooth that out. All right. Frame it. Okay. About the only thing left on him is his head. And he's kind of bored. So what are we going to do? Well, we're first going to use our negative draw standard sub. Draw in here. 
because the, our ear did get a little thick in the morph. Then we're going to use our slash and draw in the shape of the ear. He's got a slightly longer uh, this part than the other guy. And we're going to inflate slightly around that area. And smooth it. And then we're going to add in some brow wrinkles because, you know, he's not happy. Orcs are never happy. And we're going to make his, his teeth visible. And here we go. This is our final orc. And we're going to merge everything down. And we're going to append, I said append, and load in our base. Mm -hmm. And then pick up the cat that doesn't need to be in front of the camera and put him on the ground. Oh, fuzz bucket. Okay, I've been doing this for a little over three hours today. Three hours, th three models. Yay! Now, I'm going to use deformation. We're going to first offset it by Y. Okay, then we're going to offset it by Z. And that's good. Now we're going to make sure that we have it subdivided a couple times. And we're going to merge it down. And this is the entirety of our figure. And we're going to dynamesh it. And... Ding! 1.039 million. But before we reduce that polygon count to something vaguely resembling a rational number, we are going to smooth out where the boots meet the feet. Make that into boots, not a collar of some kind. Because we don't want, we want to make sure we get every, you know, make sure it look like it's something and not just something slapped together with a weird seam present. You always smooth the things together. Now we hit frame. And we have our orc. And the last thing to do is we decimate it to 35,000 polygons. So that this way it is rational for people to print with. We don't need over a million polygons distributed on Thingiverse for people to go, my computer won't run that through Cura. That's just a bit too much. And reordering vertexes and reading the GoZ file and it's 35,000 points, 70,055 triangles and we are now going to export him saving him as orc spearman 02 figure okay that is orc spearman 2 in lightly damaged mail so this has been a first. This has been 
a show where I have had literally nobody on for almost three hours, or over three hours. No comments, no anything. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to uh, refresh the page. I'm going to shoo the cat away. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold up my hand right here. I'm going to count to one so I can make sure I'm out doing the uh, lag. And when I see my finger go to, my hand go down to a one, I'm going to stop the broadcast. So if you were watching me and I just didn't know because you're hidden, if you're watching this later on Twitter or Twi uh, not Twitter, on YouTube or Twitch, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. So uh, that'll be f five, four, three. Two, one.